hello everybody dennis gebhardt here happy sunday to all of you time for a little conversation a little coffee here hope you're all doing well getting ready uh god we're moving into the second month of the year already 2022 is flying by and um i felt you know, after going through some social media here over the past week, that uh, maybe there was something we could chat about today. <clears throat> so I just want you to kind of share a story with you about some things that might hopefully give clarity. I find that there's so much confusion sometimes on social media, not because people are trying to confuse each other, but because we aren't clear on the subject which we're discussing. So I just kind of want to share with you uh, what I noticed this week, and this was on a forum where, you know, these people are considered experts. You know these people, if I were to mention them by name, and yet as I see the questions that were posed and the comments that were posed, I, I find sometimes we confuse people just by the broad statements that we make. So uh, for me today, um, my idea is, do we really understand peroxide? And many of you have been in my classes and you've heard me talk about this so much. And it's just really funny that it doesn't settle in. And so then we start talking about peroxide and other chemical elements that we work with. And uh, this is one of those scenarios where I consider it apples and oranges. So let me share that conversation with you and see what you think. So uh, this was a convent that was actually made on, uh, on a forum. And I kept everybody's name covered up so that, uh, you know, there would be no, I'm going to push enough buttons just by talking about this probably, but keep everybody's name kind of hidden. So the comment was, was about peroxide, and this person who is considered an expert was saying, yet yeah, everyone blames the damage in a hair color process on peroxide. I'm so, I am sorry, I just don't get why products pH is not taught more in schools and preached more in products. Well, I think pH is really talked about a lot, and um in a color situation, when we talk about <clears throat> the two main chemicals that we work with, the, the catalyst and the oxidizing agent, the catalyst is ammonia, most often ammonium hydroxide, uh, or it would be uh, ethanolamine, MEA. Both of those are alkaline, so they set on the, acid, the alkaline side of the scale. They're what we call bases. And then the other one, the oxidizing agent, would be peroxide. And truly, in science, peroxide is the most aggressive part of the color process. And we'll cover why that is a little bit later. Um, so the comment then, this came from one of the members, said that people, peroxide is responsible for the damage. It is the most, it is, it is the most corrosive thing we can put on the hair. And in a color scenario, it is. It is corrosive. And so it was just a, a comment that this person made just saying, look, I was told the peroxide was the most damaging part of hair color. And so then this expert comes back and says, not true. Sodium hydroxide is far more caustic than H2O2, even at 40 volume. <laughs> and, and then the first person who commented said, thank you again, why this is, Thank you. Again, why we need to know and understand pH. So both of these people were unloading on this person. And um, then the final statement was, you are so spot on. People do not know what potential hydrogen means and what it does. If they do, it, if they do it's more alkaline opens the hair shaft and acid closes it. That's the extent of it, not where the pH should be for what service and how it's correct in better results, how to correct for better results. So the whole story was this person thought peroxide was most damaging part in the color service. Another person said sodium hydroxide is more corrosive than or more caustic than peroxide. 
And so this is how we end up going down these rabbit trails. And truly, um, you know, it's really apples and oranges. I'm going to give you an example. Uh, here is, if you look at it, first of all, you know, uh, what happens? This is what peroxide does in the color process. Okay. Uh, cysteine is the con conjugated bond. That means it's a paired bond. Uh, two molecules that share the same set of electrons. It's that combination of two cysteine molecules that share the same set of electrons. Since hydrogen peroxide is used in the hair color process, disulfide bonds in proteins, which represent a major class of hair components, are oxidatively cleaved or split or broken or whatever you call them. And cysteine residues are converted to cysteic acid, SO3H residues. As a result, the negative charges in the hair are increased. So what we have is a paired bond. Peroxide goes in and steals the electrons from the paired bond. And as a result of that, creates something called cysteic acid damage. Peroxide really has three purposes in the color process and one a side effect. Okay, the purpose, the first thing would be to prepare the hair. So peroxide's main function is to go in and break down and fracture melanin, the melanocytes, make space for the artificial dyes to be delivered. Second part of what peroxide does is delivers the dye intermediates to the cortex of the hair where they bond together and they connect with the structure of the hair by the use of something called resorcinol, which helps them to bond with the hair structure. <clears throat> and that's where a color molecule develops. They also are part of the development process. So they help to develop those dyes inside of the hair strand. The side effect that most peroxide has is that it degrades during the whole process. So it is a degrading product. It is a, you know, it will break down the dye intermediates that are even in your bowl. When you look in your bowl and you see the color starting to oxidize or change color, those are partial dye molecules that are starting to develop. Peroxide is breaking down some of those dye intermediates that will never connect to each other because they're, they're broken down. They're not the same componentry. And as a result of that, some of those dye, dye intermediates will never get into the hair strand at all. And so that's really what peroxide does. That is its purpose. And, you know, it really is apples and oranges. Let me give you, um, here's a video of what the cysteine molecule looks like. This is the cysteine bond in the hair. You can see the two yellow uh, points here. Those two yellow points are the sulfur bridge. And so that's what a whole cysteine bond looks like in the hair. But when we apply color, peroxide goes in and it splits those cysteine bond, that cysteine bond. And as a result of that, it creates something called cysteic acid. And uh, that little molecule you'll see floating around the outside edge there, that is what we call a free radical, um, made up basically of chlorine. Chlorine is an oxidizing agent. And so it contends to oxidize or deteriorate the structure of the hair. And that is what's called not, not only cysteic acid, but it's also called a free radical. That's the way it works inside the hair, simple as that. So sometimes I find that it's comparing, I call it comparing apples to oranges. If you look and see the definition of a caustic material is something that's able to burn or corrode organic tissue by chemical action. So here's a little test if you wanna do yourself. Uh, you can either take your fingers or buy yourself a little piece of meat, sirloin, that's protein, it's an organic structure. Uh, take your fingers, dip them in the peroxide and hold them there and hold them for as long as you can. And then when you pull them out, you're going to find that not only did your skin turn color, but you can literally peel the skin off your fingernail because that's what peroxide did. It corrodes or breaks down. You know, the tissue, the, the protein tissue in your body. So sodium hydroxide is the same thing other than it is a base. It is extremely alkaline. It's at the 
far end of the pH scale. So yes, they are both caustic materials, but in a color process, you usually don't have sodium hydroxide. In a color process, most often you're working with hydrogen peroxide. And that is why, simple as that, we say that it is the most damaging effect because it is exactly what creates cystic acid, which we all try to combat in the color process. So I want you to keep that in mind. Hopefully it gives you some clarity. Sometimes I find that we run down these rabbit trails and people get really, really crazy with the information. Uh, at Guru Nation, we truly believe in giving you the most accurate information we possibly can and, and be as truthful as we can with you as well. I hate these broad brush statements where uh, it leaves openings for people to misunderstand the information that has been given. So look, if you uh, like what I shared with you today, please share it with your friends. Uh, come and visit us. Uh, we recommend that you take a look at some of the classes we have coming up. Uh, our upcoming program, the next one is February the 6th at 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. It is called the Telltale Hair. Uh, we take you deep inside the hair structure so you can see what exactly is going on there. And we also explain to you how the hair plays an important role in a hair color result. You have to always remember whatever your hair color result is, 50% of it is created by the hair. We also have a program coming up February the 28th, which is called The Science of It. So if you wanna know how hair colors are made, you wanna go and understand dye intermediates, p phenylene diamine, m phenylene diamine, all those big long words. Come and visit us, it's a great program. It's a live program in our virtual classroom, and we think you truly will enjoy it. And of course, we are right now in January, we're in the middle of Hair Color School winter session, and we are having a blast. Uh, we have already had our first two sessions. Session three is tomorrow morning, where we take them into physics and the law of color, the way we believe it should be taught. So our next program, Hair Color School, because we take a small amount of students, we don't take a large group of people. We want to make sure everybody gets one-on-one -on -one attention. It will begin March 6th. You can find that on our website. Uh, session one begins March 6th. So we have one session. Uh, we have a session each week. One is in the morning, then the next week, the afternoon, then the morning, then the afternoon. So you don't get tied into a tight schedule. You're, gonna, you're able to have a little bit of a life and work in the salon, uh, we, we want to be flexible, but allow you to absorb the education. You have homework to do every week between your classes. We have found by doing Hair Color School that by allowing people time to do the homework uh, in between classes, it really helps the information to transfer. So we're very excited about this program. We've had two sellout programs with Hair Color School. And it looks like our third one will be selling out. In fact, half of it is already sold out to now. So you can find that on our website if you would like to. And, uh, you know, check us out. See if we can help you, um, you know, discover some of the things you may have questions about. See if our information can make you more confident in your hair color process. We believe it will. Um, we don't believe the magic is in any product. We believe the magic is in you. And our goal is to help you discover your own personal genius. So we ask you to stay in touch with us. Keep up to date. Send us messages. Uh, you can find us on Facebook at Guru Nation. That's our, our company page. Uh, we also have a private group called Guru Hair Tribe on Facebook. And if you're interested in joining the Hair Tribe, where we, we don't do any product promotion, it is all you know, brand neutral information. I don't care what color you work with. doesn't matter to me. Uh, I just want you to understand the color that you work with, whatever it is that you're using. Um, you can ask to belong to Guru Hair Tribe and we'll have one of our admins check things out for you. I invite you to follow me on Instagram. I am at Real Captain Color and uh, take a look at what I have to offer there. I have IGTV and uh, several videos that you can follow along with. Um, you can also come to our website, which is www.gurunation.net. Uh, we have a full educational portfolio. 
So you can find programs to download and watch, or you can be in our virtual classroom, which is an online class, or even some of our live events that we have coming up this year. Uh, I think you really enjoy it. And of course, always check us out on YouTube. Uh, our program on YouTube called Rabbit Trails has uh, been going now for 30 episodes. We've really had a blast doing that. Uh, Max and I have a new program starting the, uh, really soon called The Chat, where we're going to just like I'm doing with you, we're going to talk about certain things, primary issues in our industry that will help us create more understanding and help us have more confidence with color because uh, we truly believe that the more confidence that we have, the more successful that we will be. And that is important to us. Very, very important to us. So hopefully this has helped you. If it has, tell your friends. And uh, we hope to see you some of our live broadcasts on Instagram. We do those weekly. We have been off for the holidays, but we're starting back uh, this week. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again very, very soon. So until I either see you in a class, in a live class, or you communicate with me on Instagram, from my heart to yours, I'm Captain Color. I'm out. Have an amazing weekend. See you soon. Bye-bye, everybody.